In this video, we'll discuss problem number six from the 2023 AP Calc BC exam. And as it always is, problem number six involves infinite series. And in this particular version of an infinite series FRQ, we are told that function f has derivatives of all orders for all real numbers. And we know f of zero, we know f prime of zero. They tell us what f double prime of x is equal to, and they also tell us what the third derivative is equal to. Part A asks us to find the fourth derivative of the function, and then to write the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals zero, show the work that leads to your answer. So first task is to find the fourth derivative. Well, they give us the third derivative right here. And as long as you recognize that that is a product and apply a product rule to find the fourth derivative, you should be in pretty good shape. Derivative of negative two x is negative two times the original second portion plus the original first portion. And then the derivative of f prime of x squared is gonna require a little chain rule. So the derivative of f prime is f double prime. Inner function remains inside of that and then times the derivative of that inside function. So there is our expression for the fourth derivative. Now to build the fourth degree polynomial, what we're gonna need, and I'm gonna go down to this line momentarily, we're gonna need the function value at zero divided by zero factorial times x to the zero power, plus the first derivative value at zero divided by one factorial times x to the first. Now, if you're wondering where I got the two and the three from, that should be hopefully pretty obvious. They provided us with those values. So there's not really a lot that goes into providing producing these first two terms you just need to know how to conduct a Maclaurin series or a Taylor series based at zero expansion we are going to need to know the second derivative value at zero so I'm taking what they gave us for the second derivative back here and I'm putting zero into it which ends up being negative f of zero so the second derivative at zero ends up being negative two I do need to know the third derivative at zero, so they gave us that right here, so I'm putting zero in place of the x's, and because of this time zero, that third derivative at zero is going to be zero, and I would need to know the fourth derivative at zero in order to produce this fourth degree Taylor polynomial. So if I put zero into the derivative that we actually found, uh, I get negative two f prime of zero at the front end, and then because of the zero that's going here or the zero that's going here, this, this last piece is really just gonna turn into a zero. So I, I really end up with negative two times F prime of zero. F prime of zero is three. So negative two times three gives me negative six. So I've produced the rest of these terms, uh, the second order, the third order, and the fourth order terms the same way that I talked about the first two, right? The, the second derivative evaluated at zero divided by two factorial x minus zero squared. Plus third derivative evaluated at zero divided by three factorial times x minus zero to the third, similar for the fourth. This line right here would receive full credit. It's not what the scoring guidelines are gonna show. You never have to simplify, but if you do simplify, uh, what you end up with is you end up with this nicer looking fourth degree polynomial that you see at the bottom of my screen. Part B asks us to consider the fourth degree Taylor polynomial being used. So that polynomial that we produced back in part A being used to approximate F of 0.1. They tell us that the fifth derivative evaluated at X is always going to have an absolute value that's smaller than 15 within the interval zero to 0.5. They ask us to use the Lagrange error bound to show that this approximation is within one over 10 to the fifth of the actual value of f of 0.1. So the difference between our fourth degree polynomial evaluated at one and the actual value of f of 0.1, the exact error is going to be made up by Taylor's remainder for that fourth degree polynomial. And Taylor's remainder is the, the next derivative evaluated at z divided by the next factorial times wherever we're making the estimate, in this case 0.1, raised to the fifth power. Now, the thing about Taylor's remainder is that there's some value z, which is between where the series is based, which in this case is zero, and where we're making our estimate, which in this case is 0.1. There's some value z that when I put it here, it makes up this difference perfectly. It's next to impossible to find that value that makes up the difference perfectly 
So the Lagrange air bound is the maximum value of Taylor's remainder. So the maximum value is going to be taken from this bit of given information. The maximum value of the fifth derivative anywhere between 0 and 0.5 is going to be 15. So I've said that that exact remainder is going to be less than or equal to. So this is really where the Lagrange air bound construction begins. The exact remainder is going to be less than or equal to the, the maximum value of that fifth derivative divided by the 5 factorial. And then this looks a little different than what you see at the end of this line. But if you think about 0.1 being 1 tenth, uh, 1 tenth to the fifth power is just 1 over 10 to the fifth. And the reason why I adjusted that is really because I, I saw that sitting here. So I wanted to start to begin to have my work kind of mimic what I'm trying to show. How does this simplify? Well, 15 is 5 times 3. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the 5 and the 3 from the top and bottom will cancel. This denominator is now just 4 times 2 times 1. This denominator is now just 8. So the Lagrange air bound is 1 eighth times 1 over 10 to the fifth. This is the maximum air that max that maximum error is definitely less than or equal to what we were asked to show that we were less than or equal to, 1 over 10 to the fifth. Last part of this gives us a new function, g of x, and tells us g of 0. They give us the derivative of g, and they ask us to write the second degree Taylor polynomial for g about 0. So there are a couple different ways you can do this. I went ahead and did this very similar to how we did part A, similarly to how we did part A. I know g of 0. I can easily find g prime of 0 by putting 0 in place of these x's. So g prime of 0 is going to be e to the 0 times f of 0. And back from part A, or actually it's in the problem statement here, uh, but we used it back in part A, f of 0 is 2. So g prime of 0 is also 2, right, e to the 0 times 2, which is still just 2. My second derivative of g is going to be found using a product rule applied to this. So that'll be what you see across this line right here. And if I evaluate that second derivative at 0, uh, I end up with a 1 in this spot. I end up with a 1 in this spot. So my second derivative for g evaluated at 0 ends up being f of 0, which is 2 plus f prime of 0, which is 3. So g double prime of 0 ends up being 5. What is my second degree Taylor polynomial for g? And once again, this line right here, where I haven't simplified anything, would receive full credit. Scoring guidelines are likely going to be showing what you see on my bottom line right here. Uh, and that would be our second degree polynomial for g of x.